Hello and welcome to a special series of Block Talk, which we're calling Block Talk Explores. These quick listen episodes will be split by topic area, as our guests, who are all industry leaders in Scotland, will be discussing three specific industry topics. Topic number one is education and awareness of the industry and what property factors do. Number two is recruitment within the industry and any challenges that we that they see. Um, and the third one is customer care. Um, we'll release two episodes in week one and the third will be released the following week. We hope you enjoy the series and as always, it would be great to hear your feedback. Welcome to another episode of the Block Talk podcast. So we've got a special series going just now, Block Talk Explores. Um, so in this episode, we're going to talk to Andrew Bullmar about education and awareness. Um, I'm not going to give Andrew's bio because I think he needs no introduction. He's a prominent figure in the property management for many years and is now serving as CEO of the Property Institute. Andrew, thanks for coming on again. Um, good to see you. How are you? Uh, I'm really well, thank you. It's a little bit hay fever season. I may do the old splittery cough, and I apologise for that if I do. But it's uh, it's it's nice to be back, and uh, yeah, in good form, in good form, very busy, like everyone. Good, good, glad to hear it. Um, so we'll crack straight on. To be fair, so um, education and what I think what's come out of a lot of the the uh, this series that we're doing is the people who maybe need educated um, from a, a client perspective is first-time buyers and downsizers. Um, what are the Property Institute doing to raise awareness of what property manager's role is and what the flat owner stroke landlord's role is? <laughs> That's a golden question. Um, okay, um, let's step back from that one a little bit. I think I've, there's a, I, 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 when, I, when I'm confronted with a question along these lines, I tend to take my iPhone out of my pocket and wave it at the crowd and say, well, you know, we've all got one of these phone things. Um, when you bought it or when you acquired it, did you check the documentation around it? Did you check the licensing? Do you know the radiography emissions? Do you know the legality of being able to use it in Europe? Have you in short looked at anything whatsoever? No, of course you haven't. And you went to read the terms and conditions before you scroll to the bottom, hit the tick, and, 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 and I accepted them. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's that's the way of the modern world. So there's an expectation that if you if you are a consumer of a thing, uh-huh. then that thing is just very simple. And one assumes that somebody else is just looking after all of that, and somebody has made sure that your brain won't fry when you when you phone home to your mum. So so the 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 that, that's that's I think where the consumer is sitting. Um, I'm buying a flat, um, but that's because I want to live in the flat. Things are going on in my life, and um, and I'm more interested in the things that are going on in my life than in the detail of how it works, how the flat works. Yeah. Presumably, somebody is just looking after that, and presumably they'll communicate to me, uh, they'll communicate with me when I when I need to do a thing, um, probably when I have to pay a bill. Um, so the um, the 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 idea that the professional body or the industry can educate the customer, I think is 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 an expectation too far. I think there is an expectation of occupiers that they should understand what they bought and vaguely how it works. And and the best person usually to do that explanation is the the person that they have the contact with. So that's going to be their, their factor or their property manager. Yeah. Um, so, but it, it's very much a case of keep it simple, stupid, the old kiss principle, isn't it? Keep yeah. it simple, stupid, um, and uh, provide the information that they need at the point that they need it. Um, and then provide access to further information. There will be some people that will be interested and they'll want to drill down, and that's fine. So they need a pathway to follow uh, to, to get more information. Um, but other than that, I think the... Um, uh, the expectation that we can educate the entire society as to how your tenure works, um, how factoring works, how service charges work, um, that's probably um, a, a step too far. I think they're looking these days just for a seamless service. Okay. Um, the, um, the property manager's role falls then out the back of that. 
So it's the property manager that uh, makes the introduction. They're the ones with the direct relationship. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, and therefore, they are logically the best salesperson for the profession um, yeah. with those individuals. Um, it's been tried before. Professional bodies have tried before adverts in the middle of Coronation Street or something like that. Um, they can't afford adverts in the middle of Coronation Street. They usually put it somewhere in the middle of daytime television. Um, and it costs an absolute fortune and it lands with a resounding silence um, yeah. before being swept away and forgotten before it was even noticed. Yeah. So um, the, the, uh, a, a large-scale marketing campaign to raise national awareness of a thing, whatever it is, is, is massively difficult. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a role in social media for sure, but generally people, uh, the customer, consumers only engage when they want to buy something or they want to complain about something. And yeah. so logically, you, you, the communication needs to be delivered at that point. Best person to do that is the person that they're dealing with, which is that, that, that property manager. And that, that, that kind of changes to some extent, or it, might, it complicates the role of that uh, factor or property manager because historically we've tended to look at those individuals as being uh, technical uh, technicians almost. They have a, a strong technical knowledge. They know what they're doing. They understand their job. Yes. Um, and, uh, and that's all well and good. And, and that was the case back at IRPM six, seven years ago. The qualification was centered entirely around technical competencies and yes. technical knowledge. And it was about six years ago that we brought in consumer modules, safety modules, ethics modules, because the, that profession is is evolving and communication is now a key part of it. It's a, it's a skill that's now required. Okay. Okay. No, no, that's interesting. And you're right. <clears throat> Something is only a thing to someone when it affects them at that time, right? So when they have a problem, that's when they go to learn rather than consuming that information at other times. Okay. So it's the it's the property factor <coughs> property manager's role to to educate do you think that industry um of property managers factors block managers whatever we're going to call them could be doing more from an education point of view uh, you can definitely do more um so 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 having just effectively foisted the responsibility onto that property manager and their firm the, or the yeah. factor um well, who's going to equip them to do that? Well, obviously, yeah. the employers can to a certain extent for their company. But yeah. somebody needs to start the conversation with an industry that says, hey, industry, communication is now a really important thing. Yeah. Um, so we ought to be doing that. Yeah. And that means we need to understand it. So here's some training on it. Here's some, here's some support on it. So it's starting the conversation, raising the awareness within the sector, setting the expectation within the sector. Actually, communication is now a key skill. Yeah. Um, and then supporting the industry with uh, training um, and, and, and qualifications, which include um, that sort of material. Yeah. If the professional body can also provide any collateral, um, which can be uh, which can be used, um, then that's also helpful. There's a there's a there's an example going on at the moment south of Hadrian's Wall with the Building Safety Act, yeah. which is where HSE now are running the Health and Safety Executive and now running this new regime. Um, and that requires occupiers and, and some uh, occupiers more than others to have some knowledge of what it is that they're doing. So as a professional body, we are providing that sort of information to those, uh, to those professionals, those frontline professionals to say, look, here's a, here's a thing that you can show your resident um, that backs up what you're saying. So A, we've taught you about it and B, is a tool that you can take into the property and into that communication or your email so that you can, you've got independent, um, for want of a better word, almost verification, validation. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah. Your carry. Okay. So you're talking about, so do these, and I should maybe know this, there's this. IRPM obviously have a Scottish um, um, qualification. Does that um, course include these sort of things? Yes, it does. It does. The, the IPM qualifications have four main elements: technical competence, and, and that's that's what the old um, qualification from years and years ago was. It was all the technical stuff. Well, you know, let's let's put that in the bag and keep it up to date. Then there are now three more elements: customer, safety, and ethics. 
Right, okay. Uh, because if you're a professional, ethics are, are really important. Professional ethics are, are fundamental. If you uh, Behaviours are key to building trust. If you don't have trust, you're going to have a difficult relationship with your customer. If you've got trust, you've got a great relationship with your customer. It, yeah. the, the trust is such a pivotal thing. Yeah. Safety can't be ignored. Uh, different businesses have different practices and do things, different things depending on what their their relationships are, their contracts are, their obligations under law are. Uh, but an EIOPM professional that comes out of our factory will understand safety. Yeah. Um, uh, it's not um, that's not telling businesses how to operate, but it's 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 clearly key. Um, and then the customer, um, and that's about understanding the relationships. Uh, you know who sits where, what the obligations are. And then let's have a bit of emotional intelligence about the fact that we're dealing with people's homes and we're dealing with people's money. And, um, you know, aside from their children, there's, there's, there's not many things that you could fall out with people more easily about than, than your own your own, um, uh, your own own territory, your own yeah. turf, your yeah. home, yeah. Your castle, and, um, and, and money. So uh, these are highly emotive subjects. Yeah, no, I get you. Uh, okay. Emotional intelligence is key. You can't teach emotional intelligence, but you can put it on the table and say that's what good looks like. Yeah, very true, very true. We've had that conversation in our office many times, actually. I would add another one to your list, though. I think my dog may be in there as well. It's important, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only say that because we'll have a quick conversation about animals before we start. Um, okay, okay, good, right? Okay, so that 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 sounds. Excellent. I guess the it's up to the property factor or the block manager or whatever to then decide how they use all those skills with their client base. Well, so, yes, and um, um, you know, okay, you know, uh, 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 there are similarities between blocks, but every block and certainly every person within that block is different. Um, yep. and, you know, you're dealing with you're dealing with humanity, and so the permutations are endless. So yeah. it's uh, you, you can't write a rule for everything. It comes down to equipping the that individual with the and the firm that sits behind them uh, with the toolkit to do their job. Yeah, you know, I get that. I used to, and this is maybe a bit uh, daft of me. I I did a I don't even have had this conversation before. Um, I used to wake up every morning and just believe everyone was the same and everyone thought the same. You know, I, and and I went through a good chunk of my life thinking that actually, and. Um, and then I, I was introduced by my business coach actually to a thing called Clifton Strengths, which is a it's a profile assessment thing that puts everybody into or it it, it asks you two hundred and fifty questions or whatever in a, in a short time frame, and then it tells you what your kind of strengths are, and it lists those thirty four strengths from from um, one to thirty four. The stuff in the top ten, you're that's your go-to. I'm not gonna tell you you're good at it, but that's your go-to, and the stuff at the bottom is definitely not your go-to. Um, and, but what it started opening up for me, and in fact, I did the course and became a certified coach at this stuff because it fascinated me so much. But what it gave you was a, a, a if you're talking to someone who's, who you know what their strengths are, and obviously you can't do that in life with a customer, but it made me understand how different everybody is, yeah, and the permutations, and in fact, um. I'm not a mathematician in any stretch of imagination, but my eldest son is, is, is maths is his thing. And I sit in, so what are the chances of um, you know, somebody having the same top five? And then within about 10 seconds, he gave me the answer, which I don't remember, but it was lots. Yeah. So, so it just showed that, that everyone, and in fact, I have a twin brother and I've done his Clifton strengths and they are entirely different to mine, you know? So, um, so yeah, I, the skill is, or the talent is, being able to communicate with lots of different types of people, yeah, at, at, at different times and, 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 and in different kind of um, situations. Yeah. I think that's right, and the, the 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 of course again we're heaping a lot onto the individual factor here, yeah. uh, but the um, it also it also has to be driven by the the employer by the company uh, yeah. itself. The uh, sorry, my computer decided to warn me of things. Apologies for the pain. Um, you know the, the 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 corporate culture, and that does sound a bit of a corporate remark, doesn't it? But the corporate culture is absolutely key. Yeah. If the if the business has a, an ethical approach, um, uh, un understands the importance of communication, um, yeah. has has empathy, um, then that presents a very different experience for the customer from yeah. one that may have strong technical expertise 
uh, and be extremely competent at their job, um, but not, but sometimes be tone deaf uh, to their customers. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, also we've got to remember that some customers are, you know, they can be difficult uh, from time to time. It is, it is human nature that some people either are just inherently contrarian, yeah. um, or alternatively, they're just having a bad day. You yeah. know, people's lives are complex, and, and sometimes they can be in a really bad space. So. Yeah. Um, it's um, I, for, for me. It's a top-down thing. It's it's about uh, good company culture, recruiting the right people, um, yeah. and supporting them um, in the right way. Yeah. No. No. I I, I entirely agree. In fact, um, one of the things that Clifton Strengths <clears throat> told me was that. Um, so Clifton, just to just to very briefly split you into kind of, or there are four domains. So there's um, strategic influencing execution and relationships yeah people in relationships you do not see it's blue you do not see any blue on my profile until you get to 21 it's just not happening okay so i know that so i have to recruit someone in my organization who actually understands all this because you can't be everything however any i mean my ex-business partner was hilarious he was like yeah he looked at 34 and went yeah, yeah i've got all of them in the same kind of percentage i'm like no you don't you, you cannot be everything and 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 that, that's a really interesting thing because you know um i always remember this from very very early on my career we were going to make a change in the new organization of business i was working for my first question was because i'm more strategy and influencing um my first question was how much money is it going to make and how much is it going to cost and then i will make a decision and my, my co-director, who's an absolutely fabulous guy that I worked with many years ago, his first, his first question is, how do you think the staff are going to feel about this? Okay, now, that's not my... I mean, yes, it's important to me, and yes, I think about it, but it's not my go-to. So you need different people at the top of businesses to think about these things and make sure they're doing the, thing, the right things. Yeah. That's right. I mean, there's a very similar thing called strength finders. Yeah. Um, oh, that's exactly the same. Fed fire comes from Clifton, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's it's. I was going to say, I had a, a ring of familiarity about it. Um, and that's right. You know, and and it's um the old the the old classic thing was you know well the, this person isn't very good at doing spreadsheets. Oh well, we better put them on a spreadsheet course. While somebody else is um uh, is not is, is 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 quite introverted and doesn't really like to have customer interaction. Well, we better put them on a customer training course. Well, actually, no. You put the spreadsheet guy on the spreadsheets and the customer yeah. person on the absolutely. On the you take the to make it better. Let them, let them do what they do best. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Couldn't agree more.